Hey there, we're back in Assetto Corsa. This is drive number 50 on our good drives and free roams in Assetto Corsa, um, the playlist I've been working on for the last, I guess, uh, two and a half months, give or take. So it's uh, taken some time to drive some interesting tracks, and tonight we're going to carry on the tradition, but instead of just doing one track, I'm going to showcase four tracks. And uh, these are historical tracks in world sports car racing and are uh, tied to some significant milestones for Porsche and racing. So let's go ahead and uh, jump in our uh, 906E. Now, we are at Daytona International Speedway, home of the 24 hours at Daytona. Um, the Porsche 906 debuted at Daytona in 1966. It was carbureted instead of fuel injection injected in uh, 1966. In 1967, this car came out uh, with the 906E, which is what I'm driving, um, with the Bosch fuel injection for the first time for the Sebring race. Here at Daytona, this track uh, hasn't changed a whole lot over the years. Um, in fact, if you've driven a, a lot of Daytona, you'll recognize, you know, some of the idiosyncratic aspects of the infield here. It has changed a little bit in terms of the end here. So we're going to come around this corner. This all still looks pretty much the same, but this is short. This chute has shortened or is shorter here in the old version of the track. Now it's much longer, goes down and does some uh, slightly different things before it takes the left onto the banked section of the track, which we enter here. Of course, the high banking of Daytona is what gave it its distinct characteristics. But unlike the modern track, here we, we'd be coming around and uh, about halfway down this straight, we would have the chicane or the bus stop something or another um, a set of turns that they're, they're calling it now um, that doesn't exist in the old version of the track of course and so here we are all an ass top end in fifth gear hitting nearly 160 miles an hour and the thing that's kind of unique about this track you don't realize is how bumpy it was historically um, very uh, very bumpy like right there a huge bump very very gentle under braking there too because the car gets really upset coming across the start finish line in the carbureted version of the 906 Hans Hermann turned a 208 no 207 207 and a half lap time my fastest is a 210.9, so this car is tough to drive. And this is the E version. I think the E version knocked uh, some serious time off of Hans Hermann's time in 60, 66. In fact, I think that uh, the fastest time for the E version of this car in 67 when it debuted um, was uh, 205? So. Pretty incredible. And this car, um, again, was technically street legal. <laughs> it was the 60s, I guess. I would know. Well, yeah, I would have. If I owned one of these, I'd probably drive it on the street every day just to freak the neighbors out. But uh, this is a true race car and uh, a little bit different than the 904 in that regard as it's definitely a little skittish. 
especially under braking, it'd be very easy to put this into a telephone pole um, and, uh, or into a wall, um, as it were, and, uh, and race trim. And so again, we hit the bumps there. Got to get ginger on the brakes. Or I do. I think that uh, race car drivers of this uh, era were probably a little bit better than me. for this track. It's one of my favorite races of the year for uh, sim racing. iRacing does a special event here every year. And we usually do fairly well for our split. modern version of the track and it is a mite easier to drive than this one I'll be honest So that was a terrifying 211. So imagine uh, going uh, three seconds a lap quicker um, in this car on this track. Um, that's just terrifying. But let's uh, let's go on ahead and uh, take a break from this, and we'll uh, we'll see you on another track in just a minute. Welcome to Sebring, Florida, home of the 12 Hours of Sebring. This is where the 906E made its debut with the Bosch fuel injection in 1967. And looks a lot like an autocross track, doesn't it? It is very easy to lose the plot on this particular course. And this track has changed a lot. Some of it looks really eerily the same, but some of the turn names make a little bit more sense now, too. fun though. This too is one of my favorite competition tracks. The 
lost my gear there. literally just a runway. a little sense of perspective though I think back. So let's go on to the next track. I think you're going to like the next one. Welcome to Laguna Seca in the 1960s. Notice a lot of things have changed here, but a lot of things look very much the same. added a few turns here and there, but the character of the track still remains somewhat the same. If you ever had trouble with the kink. <laughs> it hasn't changed much over the years. And of course, the beloved corkscrew. Hasn't changed much. And you'll notice the pits are on the right hand side in this era. We would go to the left modern era. But a fun track. It was not on the World Sports Car Championship calendar. In this era. A lot of regional racing. Eventually it was on the calendar, but I don't think until a major track configuration changes were made, did it? Definitely one of my all-time favorite tracks, one I would consider to be my second home track. Sonoma is my true home track. So I love this track. 
and it's one of my favorites. But let's see the last track. Welcome to Watkins Glen. This is uh, the configuration of the track in 1968 when it was uh, initially introduced to the World Sports Car Championship with the six hours at the Glen. The Porsche 906 E participated in that race. Um, it was on grid with some other Porsches. Porsche 908. But the 908s had some trouble. <laughs> and didn't uh, perform as well as uh, Porsche had hoped. Um, in fact, the 906 outperformed them in terms of finish uh, on track that year. And this track, like uh, the ones we've already looked at, definitely... has some similarities. to how it looks today. But it was also a lot more open. The boot did not yet exist. That was introduced in uh, 1977, I believe. It was a very fast racetrack. In this configuration. But also very drivable, if you paid attention. A little safer in modern era. And, like other tracks of this era, much bumpier than the modern track is. <laughs> Which makes for a thrilling drive. Under braking, under acceleration. but tremendous fun. So I hope you've enjoyed me sharing with you my favorite historic tracks and the, the stories behind them because without the stories, they're not as special. And uh, I'm a Porsche fanboy, I admit it. And uh, the history attached to this car on these tracks is uh, pretty incredible. Now, I will admit something. I had intended to show Le Mans as well um, as one of the Triple Crown, but uh, it seems that the track for Le Mans and Assetto Corsa is a little uh, weird. <laughs> it doesn't quite behave the way you want a track to behave, so um, didn't get to showcase that. So apologies for that, but I did put in uh, Laguna Seca, which is also a great historic track and uh, one that's near and dear to my heart personally. So it wasn't a total loss, uh, including that track. But I appreciate you watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode and this series. Uh, this has been a joy to produce. And, and I'm not saying goodbye to a set of Corsa, not by any means, but I think that there's going to be some uh, pretty significant stuff coming up here 
shortly that's going to uh, warrant some attention and some focus uh, across multiple other sims, and uh, not the least of which will be January 16th, the beta release of Evo, I said of course uh, Evo, which will be fun to drive uh, to sort of compare what we've seen in Assetto Corsa and uh, what the modders have been able to do with it and what Kunos is uh, going to do with uh, Evo in, in that release. So looking forward to that. Um, we'll also take a look at uh, Automobilista 2 um, and the new updates for that. And iRacing will have some significant up updates as well um, in the coming season. So lots to look at, lots to participate in. And uh, if in the meantime you find uh, a set of course of drives that you would like to see me drive, don't be a stranger. Send me a DM or comment on a video and uh, let me know. For now, I'll say goodbye and uh, see you in the next one. See ya.